So these are notes on standing waves and resonance in ears. So remember that sound waves, just like any waves, can have interference. So two waves can combine, and they will sound differently if there's two waves than if there is a single wave. And so here comes my wave, and if it looks like this, here's wave one. And let's say a second wave comes in, but it's a half a wave step out. So if I draw my equilibrium line so I can see where it starts. So let's just say this is the starting point. So my wave two is going to start half a wave away. But when it starts, it's going to do this. So it's a half a wave shifted, right? And so you can see that you're going to get destructive interference because the crest and the trough are going to fill each other in and the resulting wave is just going to be this flat line wave. That is just total destructive interference. Now the waves have to be exactly the same frequency, exactly half a wave step out in order for that to happen. That's how noise canceling headphones work. They take in the input wave, which would be that black one, and then they output a blue wave, and anything that comes from the outside, they go, oh, it cancels, and you don't hear it, even though it's playing. Now, on the other hand, uh, if we have constructive interference, I start with my first wave, right? Here's my first wave. But my second wave is a whole wavelength out of phase. So again, if I draw in my equilibrium line, which I drew a terrible wave, but you got the idea. So now instead, here's my starting point. Here's a half a wave. Here's a whole wave. So now it starts right here and continues on its merry way. So now you see that you get constructive interference and you get a loud sound. So if you can get reverberations like you're singing in the shower and your wave reflects off of the surface and you sound beautiful because you hear this nice loud sound um, combining and you're like, oh, I sound just so beautiful in the shower. Now, there are things that we need to understand the difference of, which is called forced vibration, very important vocabulary word versus resonance. And you may have heard like that resonates with me, which is comes from this word resonance. So I'll show you this demo in class, but um, force vibration forces an object to vibrate, causing more molecules to vibrate and increases the amplitude, so it just gets louder. So imagine a music box. So if you look at the inside of a music box, it just looks like that, right? It's just, it kind of sounds clunky and you hear ding, 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 ding. But if I put it inside of a box, then I have all of these molecules vibrating along with the air molecules that were already vibrating around my uh, music box. And so I get a higher amplitude. So it gets louder, it's noticeably louder. That's called forced vibration. That's why we put speakers in boxes. Um, that's why things sound better if the walls can vibrate, you're in an amphitheater, anything that makes more things vibrate. But resonance is forcing an object to vibrate at its natural frequency. So I have this little picture down here which shows some waves. And if I can get them to match right, right here where you can see, then the amplitude gets much, much higher. So I force it much, like much, much higher. I force it to vibrate at its natural frequency. Um, I put the swing down here because that is uh, something that you guys are more familiar with. So as, as this girl swings back and forth, she has some natural frequency, which remember is equal to 1 over T, as she swings back and forth, depending on the length of her string. And this boy is pushing on her. And if he matches that frequency, so he hits and he hits and he hits every time she comes back, then her amplitude gets much higher and she swings really, really high. Um, you may have heard of people using um, their voice to be able to match the natural frequency of the wine glass and make it shatter. That is true. That is possible. But you have to match the natural frequency, which I could never do. But if you can do that, yes, you can actually make a wine glass break. Or if you've seen the ones where people take their fingers and they just sort of rub around the ring and it hums, again, we're making it resonate. You have to match that natural frequency. Resonance is everywhere. It's a super important concept to understand um, with any kind of waves, but we're dealing mainly with sound waves. So 
uh, in the next slide, we'll talk more about ear hairs, but you actually have hairs inside your ear that resonate with different types of sounds. And that's how you hear different sounds as high frequencies or low frequencies. I know a lot of you don't use radios anymore, um, but if you've ever tuned a radio, as you move the dial, you're actually changing its resonant frequency and then it gets really loud when you're at the right place. If you've played instruments, and this is true for other um, wind instruments, but a flute in particular, you have to blow in it and you have to blow at its natural frequency so you know you have to change your lips in order to make it work. Cell phones. Your cell phone is tuned into only one certain resonant frequency. It is in the microwave region as opposed to radios which are in the radio region, right? So they have to change what frequency so that we don't all get mixed up, right? You can't have radios and cell phones all communicating satellites. They all have their own resonant frequency. Same with Wi-Fi. So all those things that are using waves, they resonate and it makes it so you can hear that sound, but only that frequency sound. You can't hear other frequencies. Now let's look at ears a little bit, and we will look a little bit more in class, but I just want you to have a general idea. So you have a sound wave, and the sound wave comes into the ear canal, right? And it hits the, uh, the eardrum, and the eardrum vibrates. And then that makes the fluids in these vestibular systems, semicircular canals, so there's fluid in there. They go in uh, 90 degrees to each other, so it makes you dizzy because there's fluid in your ears. And it goes inside this cochlea, which is the inner ear. Oh, there were these bones. I forgot about those. But the bones vibrate. So sound waves come in, hit the eardrum, bones vibrate, liquid vibrates. But inside this snail looking thing, this cochlea, are these little hairs. But if you look, see how these hairs are longer and these hairs are shorter. So we have long hairs and we have short hairs. And if you think about it, which will make more sense as we start looking at resonance and standing waves, but if you think of the hair is sort of proportional to lambda, right? So this is my, my little hair, and its length is proportional to lambda. And then you have a shorter hair, which is proportional to lambda. So here you have a big lambda, and here you have a small lambda. Well, the speed of sound is the same right? No matter what we do, we've been talking about that. The speed of sound doesn't change. So if V is equal to lambda F, that means if lambda goes up, frequency goes down. So lambda goes up, frequency goes down. So this is going to have a low resonant frequency, and this one right here is going to have a high resonant frequency. So these ones here, the high frequencies, and these ones here, the low frequencies. So long hairs, long hairs, low frequencies, short hairs, high frequencies. And so these are the ones that get ruined as you get older and it makes you harder to hear some of those sounds that are out there. And so the older you get, the hairs get damaged. And as the hairs get damaged, they're not replaceable. You can't fix them. That's different from hearing really loud sounds. Really loud sounds mess with your eardrum. Um, that's why younger people, if you rip, right, the, if this is sealed. And if you rip that eardrum, oh, it sounds painful, right? Um, then it doesn't always repair. And then you can't hear as well because it can't vibrate as well. Uh, but this has to do with the frequencies you can you can actually hear these little tiny, tiny hairs. All right, so let's talk about this length versus frequency thing and see if it makes sense. So imagine a jump rope. And again, I will show this demo later in class. But imagine a jump rope and you're just swinging it up and down. So you got two people here and you're swinging it up and down and we get this standing wave. So your eye sees this. So you have to hit a certain frequency to make that amplitude really big and make it resonate. Because if you miss it, if you, it's kind of like pushing the swing. If you push the swing out of sync, out of its natural frequency, it doesn't look right, right? They get this bumpy right. But if I can hit it just right and I wiggle it up and down and up and down and up and down and I get this nice big wave, and again, I will show that to you, then you can see that the length of the string where it's connected here to here is a half a wavelength, right? Because that's a half a wave. If I kept drawing, it would be going over there, right? If I kept drawing, it would be going over there. So that is a half a wave. That means that my length of my rope is or twice the length of my rope is equal to lambda, right? Because that's a half and that's a half. So I need two of those lengths in order to get a full lambda. That is the biggest wave I can get on there. But I can keep wiggling faster. 
The wave, now important, the wave speed doesn't change. Remember, V stays the same. Now, we can change it if I, like, tighten it, but for now, our purposes for everything we're talking about, the V stays the same. The V stays the same. So if this lambda is for a certain frequency of wiggling up and down, I can increase my frequency, and what's going to happen to my lambda? My lambda should go down. So let's look at the next pictures. So you can see that here we were, we were at what's called the fundamental frequency. This is our first one, right? Lambda is equal to 2L, and that's known as f naught, my fundamental frequencies, the first harmonic. Those of you who play music understand this concept. But now I can go up a frequency. I can double my frequency. I doubled my wave segments. That's a nice way to look at it, right? Now I've got two segments, right? But now I've got a full lambda, right? This, this is a full lambda right now, where before it was lambda over two. So that means lambda is the same as L, because remember my length isn't changing. I'm still holding on to my rope and making it wiggle. I'm just, instead of making it wiggle like that, I'm making it wiggle like this. And that's known as the second harmonic. And then I do the same thing. I wiggle faster, right? So here's frequency one, frequency two, frequency three. I wiggle even faster, right? So I'm wiggling, 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 wiggling. I'm wiggling even faster. And so now I have three segments. One, two, three. So that's one and a half lambdas, which is two thirds, right? You flip it over. And it's three of the har first harmonic, right? So I just go F, two F, three F. And then, of course, I go to four F. Because now, if I wiggle fast enough, right, I keep increasing my frequency and I'm decreasing my lambda. Notice it's getting tinier and tinier and tinier in the same amount of space. So now my lambda is only half a L. So it went 2L, L, 2 thirds, 1 half. That's a harder pattern to see. Easy patterns goes F, 2F, 3F, 4F. Lambda over 2, lambda. 3 halves lambda, 2 lambda, right? You can look at it as lambda over 2, 2 lambda over 2, 3. I keep adding a half a lambda, but we know this is the same as lambda and this is the same as 2 lambda, all right? We're looking at patterns, 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 patterns. Now, what if we're open, open? So this would be like a tube that's open on both sides, which could be a flute, a tuba, um, it could be an organ pipe that you keep open on both sides, right? So you still get this standing wave, this resonant wave inside. But now, so if we think about it, here's, I know this picture doesn't show up, but just my mind, this is how it works. I can go closed, closed, right? So I can go closed, closed. So I can go half and then I go full one and a half. Um, two, right? Now, on the other hand, if I'm doing this one, which is open, open, and I draw my wave, but now I'm starting open. So that means I'm going to start here and I'm going to go to here, but that's still a half a wave. And then it's one wave because I got to go to open and then I got to go to open and then I got to go to open. So if you look at it, right, that's what this is showing. This part, let me do it in yellow. So this is that, right? Do you see it? And so it's open, open, but it's still lambda over two equals L, and this is F naught, right? And this is two lambda over two, right? Which is equal to L, which is two F naught. So it's the exact same pattern, even though it looks a little different, and then four lambda over 2 equals L, which is 4 F naught. So I go a half, and then I go 1, and 1 and a half, and 2. So it's the same thing, right? Open, open, close, close, same thing. It's just one's going from an anti-node to an anti-node, and one's going from a node to a node. You just need to be able to draw them. Um, so keep those pictures in mind. You might want to have a couple of those in your notebook. It was being slow. Uh, what about open closed? So open closed, now I have a node over here and I have an anti-node over here. So if we go back and we draw my wave, 
right? As we were looking at it before, now I'm going from a node to an antinode, right? So this is that. How much of a wave is that? That's a quarter of a wave, right? So now L is equal to one fourth of lambda, right? So that, think about it, is that a bigger wave or a smaller wave? That's always the hard part to think of. But if you think about it, if this is a quarter of a wave, you can imagine it's a, I can't even draw it, it's so big, right? This is a really big wave. This is really big. And again, I'll do some demos with you for that. But this is still F naught, right? But what's going to happen this time? Let's think about that before we go to the pictures. I need to always start at a node. So I'm always going to start here. If I go to here, I end up at another node, but I can't. I gotta end at an antinode, so I gotta add a half a wave. You see how that's three fourths? And then I add a half a wave, and then that's five fourths. Five, five fourths. And then I add a half a wave, and that's seven fourths. So you're, again, you're seeing a pattern, right? The thing is, though, instead of going one, two, three, four, five, notice we're going one, three, five, seven. Open, close. Whoops. So here we are. This is L equals one fourth of lambda. And here we are. L equals three fourths of lambda. And here we are. L equals five fourths. So these are all different resonant frequencies that'll make this tube resonate, whether it be a flute or a tuba or whatever it is that you're blowing a frequency into and matching it. You just have to get to higher and higher frequencies. So this is F naught. This is three times F naught. And this is five times F naught right? Because it's the fifth, the third, and the first. They, you don't do the second one because it doesn't work. You have to triple and then the next one will be seven fourths and then it would be nine fourths, etc. Remember, still, V stays the same. Okay? So this is open, close. So that brings us to the last slide, which is the equation you need. And it's easier to think of it in sense of concepts. So if we know V equals lambda F, that means that F is equal to V over lambda, which is what I have right there. So F of N, that's the first frequency, second frequency, third frequency, um, over lambda is going to be equal, is, well, F is equal to V over lambda. Easy enough. So that means that F is equal to V over, remember, it always has the four. So it's got the one-fourth part. So it's always over a four, because remember, it was one-fourth and then three-fourths. That was our pattern, five-fourths. So we always have it over 4L. And then you just put a constant for them. It's either one or three or five. And so that's what the end, that's the, the frequency. This is first frequency, third frequency, fifth. Frequency. There is no second and fourth. I know it's kind of weird. It's like the second frequency that would work, but it's the third frequency in a sense. And then if it's open, open or close, close, same thing. F equals V over lambda, but now it's N V over two L. Because remember now we always do a half and then a whole and then three halves and five halves. But this one, you can do one, two, three. Notice, too, if I would put a 2 in front of here, it'd be 2 fourths, which is 1 half, which is this, so it doesn't work. So you have to make sure that you always have that quarter in there. That's why the open-closed is a little strange. That's it.